Genesis 3, let's turn there. Um, New Watchman Broadcast is out. YouTube's still trying to process it, figure out whether or not they're going to let me put it on there or not. Sermon Audio said, yeah, go ahead. It's about aliens. Lizard looking. Reptilian. A hybrid baby named Drax. Can't make this stuff up. Can't make it up. I, I remember the first time I really caught on to a message that I thought was implanted into a science fiction movie. And it was Starman. Uh, 1980-something another uh, Jeff Bridges. And he is in a spaceship and he falls to earth. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And I'm going, wait a minute. So then he finds DNA. I just happen to have a DNA sample here. This is, I took this from Brother Sterling without his knowledge or consent. This is your DNA, Sterling. And the alien takes DNA out of this guy's house. He's dead. Okay, there's a message there. I'm telling you, you know the Bible, you get this stuff. And recreates this dead man's body, bringing him back to life again. So the woman who was married to this man is freaking out. Figures out that this is an alien in her dead husband's body. He's got to get back to a certain place because he's got to make a phone call. E.T.'s got to call home. So the government's involved and so on. But he ends up... Sons of God, daughters of men type thing. Genesis 6 is all I'm going to say. Tells the woman that she's going to have a, his baby and he's going to be a great teacher in this world. And I'm going, no, he's not. And I'm going, I can't believe they put that in a movie. But then I started realizing, hey, you know, we have a Bible to teach us the truth. The, devil, the devil's Bible is holly weird. And Motown and Nashville and Los Angeles and record companies and media companies and 666 East Avenue, New York City, where they used to print comic books at. And uh, all kinds of weird, weird... Um, messages implanted into movies and TV shows and commercials and such. So, and, and here's why. Genesis 3, we'll read that and we'll go to prayer. Here's why. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. I watched a video yesterday of a a python, probably, or maybe one of those big, long ones. They don't have any venom. They don't need it. This thing was halfway sterling through swallowing something about the size of a moose. Had made its way all the way to the rump and the back legs. Had the back legs folded back. This snake snuck up on this humongous, whatever it was. It was over in Sri Lanka. Whatever they have over there that's like deer. This thing was as big as a moose. And this snake was able to sneak up on that moose and wrap his body around that moose's neck. Cutting off his air supply until he was dead. And then ate him. And then slithered off. That's a big... I don't want to... I don't... I, I'm, little, I'm thinking about the guys that are holding their phones filming this thing. This python. Taking its last 
you know, they, they spread their jaw open and stretch themselves out and hell hath enlarged herself is the verse that came to mind. And I'm going, you know, that thing's pretty vulnerable right about now. Why don't you cut its head off right after it swallows the last part of that leg? Because it can't do nothing to you. Because now that you know this thing is out here, you can never come to these woods ever again. Cut its head off. The serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. So the devil will never come to you dead on and say, Hi, I'm, the, I'm Satan. Nice to meet you. Uh, we would like to um, invade your body, invade your species, plunge all of your kind into the pits of hell for all of eternity. Is that okay? Never do that. They're subtle. So you don't see it coming, you don't know it's there, you don't until it's too late. Um, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. Now, there's a re now we know what he does, how he does it. So tonight we're going to go back into why he does it. Why Satan does what he does. Why did he, why was he questioning God's word? You should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes, that's the 33rd word in that, that Satan says in this whole collection of words 33rd word is his your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods and i had that wrong in my mind for years gods not god gods knowing good and evil so here we have the introduction to satan the dragon the serpent the old devil the deceiver the tempter and we're studying what he can do what he can't do his powers his strengths his limitations we're studying those from, uh, from the Word of God, from Scripture. And let me say this, there are many serpents. And I don't mean M-I-N-I, -I, I mean M-A-N-Y. An endless number of dragons and serpents and reptile-looking devils. There are hordes of them. And they all work for who the Bible says, Isaiah 14, Lucifer. So let's turn to Isaiah 14. I'll give you about five seconds. And uh, then we'll go to prayer. Appreciate everybody coming out today. It's one of those things where we had to turn the furnace on this morning, turn the air conditioner on this afternoon. So if you get a little uncomfortable, contact my wife and she'll turn the air on for you. If you think we need it. Isaiah 14. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we move on. Heavenly Father, I love you. Lord, help us to always be aware of the wiles of the devil. How he works. What he does. He is not our friend. He is not someone that we're looking to come and save planet earth. He is a deceiver, a destroyer, a murderer, a liar, a thief, a hater of mankind. He's full of arrogant pride. He hates man. He hates you, Father. He hates your son, Jesus Christ. He hates the Holy Spirit. He hates the Bible. And I hate him. I hate him what he does. I hate how he hurts people, hurts families, hurts people that we care about, kills them. I hate the deceptions and the temptations that he has thrown my way in my life. I hate all of it. And Father, if this world is who he is, then this world can burn along with him for eternity as far as I'm concerned. I want no more of it. Father, open our eyes wide. Help us to see and understand. Help, give us understanding in the eyes of our soul and our spirit. We understand the deep 
deep-rooted nature of just how subtle the serpent is and what he does to us and how he forges against us to try to destroy us and what his plan is. Father, may your name be glorified, your kingdom magnified, and your righteousness exalted. And Father, you'll provide everything else that we need. And we love you for your religion, your ways. We love you for that. We pray this in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Now turn to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 sort of work hand in hand. We're going to understand the, I started on this last Sunday night and I'm going to continue it on. It may back up a little bit. I don't remember what all I left off with last Sunday night, but here's what I call the Satan's five point plan. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, the word Lucifer means light bearer. Light bearer. His, so we, we believe that originally when Lucifer, the anointed cherub, was created, he was created in absolute splendid beauty. Amazing beauty. And that he was created perfect, and we'll read that in the scriptures. But then fault was found in him. Now, when it comes to the angelic realm and time, it's really, uh, a, a real, we really don't understand time in heaven. So how long did Lucifer exist before he turned bad? Well, between Genesis 1 and Genesis 3. Somewhere in there, he goes nuts. And what I believe he wants is related to how God made him and what God made him for. And I'll explain what I'm, how I'm talking about in a minute. But how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So, uh, you know, I was talking about movies a while ago. I, I talked about this in the CRISPR Watchmen, the imagery of, in this movie, Rampage, with Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, and how they're up in space doing all these CRISPR DNA modifications. And then these things come falling down from the heavens to the earth to modify creatures on the earth. And I'm going, I know what that imagery is. I get it. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And uh, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? And I want you to think about this. I, you know, kind of preached pretty heavy this morning about unclean sins. Well, who... Who bribed us? Who, who tempted and teased us into sin? Satan did. And in that, that's how he weakened the peoples of this world. He's, he's taken Adam, this big, strong specimen of all mankind, and brought him down. Brought him down. Destroyed mankind. He put, introduced death into the world. By causing Adam to sin, he weakened the nations, literally weakened the, weakened the nations. Everybody that's born has a weakness. Okay? Everybody that's born has their weakness. And the devil did that to us. He said, weaken the nations. For thou said in thine heart, five things. Number one, I will ascend into heaven. I'm going back up. So... Elon Musk builds a rocket ship, calls it the dragon, that ascends up into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So we have, and we studied this in Genesis 1 and Genesis, yeah, Genesis 1, where we have the heavens, which is the sky, that beautiful blue sky out there. That's the first heaven. The second heaven is the realm where all the stars are. But then there is a heaven above the, he the heaven of heavens. That's where Lucifer wants to be. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm not going to sit in the midst of the stars. I'm going to be above them. I'm going to set my throne there to rule over the angelic realm. Stars are angels. Every star is an angel. That's what I believe. Why not? 
Why not? I mean, mankind has given them names. Why don't we give them names? In fact, you can lend, you can lend your computer, you can leave it where it is, plug it into the internet, install software on it, and your computer, while you're not using it, will be used to map all the stars that we can see in all the galaxies and give them a number. Your computer can be used to help that process. I don't know if you knew that or not. I don't do it, but you can help out. Name all the stars that are in every one of them that we can see, that we can identify. You can help name them by lending whoever's doing it your computer. So if man can name all the stars, God can too. And God has. He has a name for every one of them. Whew! Trying to rem it's like trying to remember the grandkids. Which is why I use nicknames. Cheeseburger is cheeseburger. And Gwen Darling is Gwen Darling. Hi, darling. See? So I don't get it mixed up. All right. So anyway, so how, the, how for thou hast said in thy heart, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He wants to rule over the stars of heaven. And there's a war. Revelation 12, because of that, I believe. Exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's this church. That is this church and every other church that's ever been right with God. That is the, that is the church of Jesus Christ. The mount of the congregation is Mount Zion in heaven, in the sides of the north. That means the north side. Um, east, west, north. That way. Uh, Sandy gave me some pictures of UFOs that you took. She said, they all come from the north. And I believe her. I believe her. They come out of, they come, there's something about the north in the Bible. You, and I'm going to get into that in the Watchman broadcast series. There's something about the north. But anyway, that's where God come from in Ezekiel 1 was the north. So in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Jesus is going to meet us there. He's going to be above that or try to be. I will be like the most high. Now, that's his agenda. Will he accomplish it? Before you say no, I will be like the most high. Not the most. I will be, not that I will be like. I will be the most high, but I will be like the most high. Okay, did I say that right? I stammered over it enough times to where I think you got it. But I will be like the most high. And so everything that God does, Satan has an upside down version of it. So God, think about it. God sent his only begotten son to claim a bride. That's the purpose. Is that God has set aside a bride, just like God set aside a woman from, for Adam, from Adam, for Adam. God has set aside a bride from Christ, for Christ. And that's the plan of the ages. So Lucifer's all upside down version of that is... The sons of God coming down, finding wives, all of which they chose. And creating a hybrid race that we call the giant. The Bible calls the giants. And these giants were big giants. I mean, not just tall, big. Evil things. God hated them. So that, you know, is his plan. That's his ideology. I will, so, and everything that, there, if there is a Jesus, there's another Jesus. There is a gospel, there is another gospel. There is the spirit, there is another spirit. And the gospel is the Bible. If there is a true Bible, there's plenty of fake Bibles. Is there not? That's why we are here in this place. Because we believe this Bible and no other. So he, he is, that's what's in his mind. I will be like the Most High. Turn to Hosea 13. Hosea 13. Joel, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. So if you find Ezekiel, find Daniel, then Hosea's next. 13. Hosea Julio. <laughs> Hosea Gomez. Hosea chapter 13. Here, here's, here's how God says it. 
You know, here's Lucifer saying, I will be like the Most High. People's going to worship me thinking they're worshiping God. And then God said he's going to turn Ephraim over to that. He, so he tells Ephraim, he's talking to Ephraim, if you look in verse 1, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. And then you look at verse 7, God said, Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way will I observe them, I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion, the wild beast shall tear them. So you have a, a lion, a leopard, a bear, and a wild beast. And in Revelation 13, the Antichrist is like a lion, a leopard, a bear, and the dragon gave him his power, seed of great authority. So I see something here. God says, I think, I think God says, they think they're worshiping me, but they're not. They're worshiping the Antichrist because they don't know the difference and they don't want to know the difference. They want the fake one because the fake one lets them parade at the Gay Pride Festival. The fake Jesus lets them keep their sins. Okay? So that's, that, I mean, that's Satan. That's his replacement. He says, I will be like the Most High. So you got people thinking they're reading from a Bible, thinking they're praying to Jesus, thinking they're, they're following the gospel, but they're not. It's, it's a different version of it. Now, when well, that got big, turn to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel yeah, Ezekiel 28. Here's another, another way of saying what is in Satan's heart. Ezekiel 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now this throws the theologians off. This is only referring to some earthly king. The prince of Tyrus, I believe, is Satan. He's a principality spirit, and we're wrestling against these. So saying to the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, capital G, in your King James. I sit in the seat of God. Meaning I'm on the throne of God. What is God's throne? What is it? It's the Ark of the Covenant. That's God's throne. I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas. What is he talking about? In Revelation 4. John said he saw a sea of glass, clear as crystal, literally an ocean that looked like crystal glass. Boy, that would be so beautiful. John sees that. When Solomon built the temple, his temple, he put, he made a pedestal for the Ark of the Covenant, literally on a sea of crystal glass. Put it on there. So you have two witnesses there. And that's what he means. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. You say, okay, pastor, you got me, got me throwed here. Is he a spirit, an angel, or is he a man? Well, let's answer that with scripture. So hold your place there in Ezekiel 28, because we're going to come back to it. Turn to Psalm 82. Here's what I see is going to happen here. And we get a foreshadow of it. We get a foreshadow of it. Psalm 82, verse 6. I'll give you a second. I've said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Little g, gods. Those are all of the angels, all the spirits. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the what? Princes. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And it just said here that he's the prince of Tyrus. So he falls from heaven. And here's, here's what I see. Satan entered into 
physically the body of Judas Iscariot. Now Judas Iscariot and Satan are one. And what happened to Judas Iscariot after the whole deal went south with Jesus and he throws the money back into the temple and says, I don't want it. What does he do then? Goes out and hangs himself. You shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Because at some point he hung out there so long. I know this is kind of disgusting, but he hung out there so long that his rotting corpse fell, literally came loose from the rope. The Bible says when he hit the rocks there below him, his bowels burst forth asunder, gushed out. Ugh. By the way, the bucks are in rut in, in Iowa. I'm here to tell you. You know how I know? Because half of them are laying on the side of the road dead. Bucks, Sterling, bucks laying up there. That, that ain't. If you hit a deer, call somebody, have somebody pick it up. Don't waste it, okay? They can't help it this time of year. They go crazy. Anyway, so Satan, that's a picture. It's a foreshadowing of what's going to happen. He, he dies like a man. And I won't get into the, all of that right this second. So back in Ezekiel 28. So we see this part about what Lucifer wants. He wants to sit on the seat of God, the Ark of the Covenant. He wants that throne. Why? Why does he want it so bad? Because I think he guarded it at one point. So let me illustrate it this way. You have in every, every part of your body, you have the cells. And I've taught on this before, but it, I want you to understand how this is going to happen in the last days. Because there's so much now being written about and talked about CRISPR and gene editing and technology taking technology taking the form of in 10 years, we will not carry cell phones. In 10 years, we may have to go back to flip phones because I'm not putting them in my body. Because that's where the technology is headed. To break to breach the wall, the barrier, the human skin, tying directly into the human brain. I don't want that. I yes, ma'am. I think five G is leading in that direction, because you've got to have the bandwidth. It's like it's like a water hose. Difference between a water hose and a water pipe. A water hose can carry this much water and a water pipe can carry this much water. And when you have band, a little bandwidth, when everybody comes in this building, you're so used to logging in to the Wi-Fi that your phone automatically logs into the Wi-Fi. This is why we don't give you the other Wi-Fi password. Because it would choke out our stream. Because all your phones would be transmitting data nonstop during the church service. Okay, so they got 5G is about width so that everybody and coverage so that everybody can be connected 24 seven. So there's no empty spots. There's not a think of the worldwide web as a net. Literally a net. And when that net is dropped on everybody, it's literally going to catch everybody. And if there's a hole in the net, you can escape. Make sense? Okay, so 5G is about the coverage. And when the brain interface is finally out on the market, you won't have to make people get it. All you'll have to do is have the people who have it tell you what it's like on YouTube and everybody will go get it. Don't do it, people. I'm telling you, don't do it. Okay? But anyway, it's the human cell. The human cell is like the tabernacle in the wilderness. In the nucleus is where the book of the law is stored. That's your DNA. Moses wrote out the law of God. Put it in the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was in the most holy place of the tabernacle, which is what... See, this is my version of computer graphics. I'm not 
This is about as far as I can get. I can draw squares and stuff like that. But here's the tabernacle, and here's the cells of your body. There's a wall around all your cells, or a membrane, to keep stuff out that shouldn't be in there. You have a wall around your house, do you not? You have four walls in your bathroom and a door that shuts? For a reason? Hey! Okay? To keep stuff out. Or to keep stuff in, in this case. And it's the same way. And these Levites said, you're not bringing that in here. It's going to defile the tabernacle. So this, this is the most holy place. This is where God was, right here. This is the same place, right here in your cells. This is the nucleus of the cell where all your DNA in cross form is in every cell in your body. The throne of God is right here in the most holy place. Literally in the DNA. That's the, this is the throne of God here. Now I'm going to show you something in a minute. Okay, this is on my cool list. So turn to Revelation 4 very quickly. I'm not going to drag this out, but it fits with what we're talking about. If the devil's going to sit on the throne of God, where is the throne of God? Well, there's one in heaven. But Satan gets kicked out of heaven. Does he not? So he can't have that one. There's another one. There's another throne of God. A duplicate. So in Revelation 4, John sees the, the tabernacle in heaven. The heart, look up on the screen, the human heart has the four chambers. Those are the four living creatures where the throne of God is. Your heart is where God reigns right now. Right, Sister Betty? Got Jesus in your heart. Where does Satan then want to be? In your heart, he wants to rule literally from the house of God, which is your body. The two lungs are the seven spirits of God. We talked about that. The 24 elders are your 24 ribs. Notice that they surround the throne of God in the heart. Around the heart, you have a sack called a pericardium. That was what we read in Hosea. You shall rim the call of their heart. Call is a sack, like a baby call where the baby comes out born sometimes in the sack what do they call that huh in call there's another word for it something baby but anyway the call of the heart is the sea of glass surrounding the four chambers surrounding the throne of god so when Satan wants to sit in the throne in the midst of the seas, he literally means the human heart, because that's how God designed it. Okay? So as it is with here, so it is here. Same idea. Rule in the house of God, which is the body of mankind. Now, I'm going to add something to that. Notice in Exodus 25, 22, God said, There will I meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Notice the word cherubims here. And notice that, like Psalm 80 says, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims. Psalm 99, the Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. You have, and you have multiple verses in the Bible that says that. The cherubims were angels. And on the Ark of the Covenant, you had two angels that spread their wings over and covered the seed of God. Well, what did... In fact, we didn't read this verse yet. Turn, to, turn back to Ezekiel 28. Hope I'm not scrambling your brains. As eggs. But Ezekiel 28 tells us then. Ezekiel 28, 12. That if you look in verse. I'll point this out very quickly. In verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. So I think Lucifer before his fall. I think he covered the throne of God. And he's staring at it. And he's going, 
I want that. I will be like the Most High. I will sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. You covet what you see. So he wants the throne of God. He wants it up in heaven. He's not going to get it. So he's going to come down here. And in every human, he did it to Judas Iscariot. He physically is the only place in the whole Bible where Satan himself physically entered into and possessed a human. The only one we know of was Judas Iscariot. And that was to betray and have Jesus killed because he didn't think he'd come back. He didn't think, he, devil figures, if you die, you're dead. And you go to, he knew where they went. He knew they went to the lower parts of the earth. Fine, I'll trap him down there. Then I will have the throne of God. The son's dead. Now I can have it. Okay? So that's what he thinks. So I have this other theory. So you have the Lucifer, the covering cherub. He's covering the throne of God. God kicks him out, calls two other cherubs to come and cover the throne of God. Double witness, Old and New Testament. God is dwelling between those two. So look at it like this. You have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then you have the four Gospels in the middle of them. The four Gospels is where God is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He's literally dwelling between the two cherubims here, the Old and New Testament. You follow me on that? So your DNA is the same way. Here are the four Gospels and the four base pairs that unite together like a husband and a wife to make out the words, this is Sterling's DNA, so everything that Sterling is, is right here, written in this book that God wrote specifically for him, and the word becomes flesh, becomes his flesh. How tall he is. How long he's going to live, the heart condition he's inherited from other people in his family tree, okay, was passed down to him in their DNA, ended up with him, okay, did he pass it down to Lisa? I don't know, to Monica, we don't know yet, okay, but it's in the book that's written out of him. So right here in the midst is God, and here... These two legs of the ladder are made of phosphorus, which is light, light bearers, which is like angels. So you have God dwelling between the two cherubim here in your DNA. Isn't that cool? And all of this is floating in salt water in your cells. A sea of glass, clear as crystal. So Satan wants to get in here, doesn't he? He wants to take out the one who's in here and replace it with himself, which is reason 4,985,922,418 why you should never have your DNA changed. As if you need that many reasons. But I bet I can come up with 4,985,912 reasons why you should never have your DNA changed. Give me a while. Okay. Now, Ezekiel 28 again, verse 12. I got eight minutes. Verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And he was. He was perfect in beauty. He, had, he, he was the most beautiful angel of all of God's creation. I mean, you, ladies, you like to walk in a jewelry store because in jewelry stores, they put lights right over the top of those diamonds to make them sparkle. Woo! Because us rednecks love shiny things that sparkle, don't we? Right, Ron? Okay. And that's how the devil gets us. See how beautiful I am? Thou sealest full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, a garden of God. So we know it's talking about this is not just the king of Tyrus. It's Satan. Every precious stone was thy covering. So God literally clothed 
Satan with jewels. Literally built into him was jewels. Uh, and we have ten of them. Sardius, topaz, diamond. My wife says, you had me at diamond. The barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. So what was he made of? He's made of stones, gold. He's made of gold. Did the Israelites worship gods of gold? Literally. Because that's how God made them. How did God make us? Out of minerals in the earth. Stones. DNA is, is a crystal. It's God's word written in stone, literally. So, he says... Oh, oh finishing up verse 13. After it says the word gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So we know angels sing. We know birds sing. We know crickets and grasshoppers, which my wife doesn't like. There was a cricket on our bathroom screen door in our trailer. And my wife was going to burn the trailer down. To kill it. Honey, just let me shoo it off. But God gave them musical instruments in their wings and legs. He built instruments into them. Same with birds. He built instruments into their bodies. So it's not so far-fetched as it seems. But we know Satan knows music, doesn't he? He knows music. He knows how to play Use it, write the lyrics for it. He knows all of that. And he's very good at it. Very. It is a multi-billion dollar industry, the music industry is. And it's so full of seedy corruption and so full of satanic religion. Is it not? I mean, you go, follow, follow progression from the crooner songs on the radio in the 30s to the rap stars being very explicit and graphic in their description of what they did to a woman. We've turned into animals and we've let music do it. You young people, hey, don't listen to the devil's music. Don't do it. Um, so he, then he said in verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, which is Mount Zion in heavenly Jerusalem, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I don't know what that is. When I get to heaven, I'll ask God. So will you. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. And what was his iniquity? Pride. Pride. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. That seems kind of weird, doesn't it? That Satan wants merchandise. Do magpies steal things? Why? Huh? They're shiny. Any kind of bird is always going to be a picture of an angel of some kind. And so, I mean, it sounds kind of, but God created these lesser gods this way. They latch on. For some reason, the devil and all his devils have an appetite for this world and the things that are in this world and the gold that is in this world. More so, I would say probably more so than even men. 
We know Babylon is the spirit, and yet she's all about the merchandising and selling. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. So we have an angel sinning now. And an angel is not offered redemption. Not offered. So you are to thank God you were not created to be an angel. Because they were made to be taken and destroyed is what they were. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So it must be related to the mountain of God somehow. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Remember, earlier in Ezekiel 28, he said, Thou art wiser than Daniel. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. And no secret was hid from thee. But now we see because of his pride, because of the beauty, it's corrupted his wisdom by, his wisdom by reason of thy brightness. And I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. And I believe that. We know that when Christ returns in Revelation 19, he's going to come, he's going to grab a hold of the beast and the false prophet, and cast him in the lake of fire. Because Satan has used the beast and the false prophet to gather together all the armies of the nations. To bring them to the valley of Megiddo. To fight a war. So that Satan can have God's throne. And it doesn't work. He tried it at Calvary. He lost there. He tries it again. He tries it on the mountain. He's the God of the mountain. That's where that song comes from. He tried it on the mountain and lost. He tries it in the valley because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Same God. And he lo loses again. He's going to lose that battle, but he doesn't. See, Satan knows the Bible, but he doesn't believe the Bible. That's his problem. And he can't see certain things. Like certain animals can't see certain colors. The devil and his angels cannot see certain things. God does not allow them to see these things. And so they're missed. They're, they trip over themselves. They're blind, leading blind people. But they think they can win. If we just get enough people on our side, get enough of mankind together, We'll build an army. We'll join with them. That's your fourth kingdom. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Daniel 2.43 says. Literally in man's DNA. And we're going to have this big huge army that's going to beat up Jesus. And it's not going to work for the second time. So God's going to throw him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And at the end of that. God's going to open up the pit. Satan's going to come climbing out. He's going to try it one more time. He's going to lose again. It's going to be a short war. Then he's going to cast him into the lake of fire with all the other sinners where the beast and the false, false prophet are for all of eternity. Now turn to Romans 16. And I'll cut you loose. I, this is my favorite. I love this one. You do that. Listen, every time... Every time God allows you to be conquered, you become the conqueror. Every time. Every time God lets Satan have a little bit of power over you, you end up going, this is not, no, no, nah, I'm not doing this. And God allows you to rise up and you become the victor. Paul said, now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. Now, how many times did God say we were going to triumph? What is that? Is that a percentage? 100. There's not possible to be a thousand percent. It's all the way complete victory. 
Now, I know we don't see our life being that way. But I'm telling you, every time God allows Satan to stomp you down, he puts something in you that says, I'm not going back to that. And you stand up and you say, ah, no, no, devil, no, I'm telling you, no. Get thee behind me, Satan. So Romans 16, I love this. I don't even know where it is. Where is it? May the God of heaven bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Where is it? Verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise. Let's go back a verse. Let's go back a couple verses. Verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but, but their own belly. Why the belly? The belly's, the belly's where all your, your appetites are. Your lusts are all here. Okay? They serve, and they ser people serve that, don't they? They serve their lust. That's why that, that's why this gal got beat up here at this daycare. Boy, it ticks me off. We got drugs in our neighborhood, and a gal got beat up, attacked early in the morning at this daycare center, because the guy wanted drug money, so he could buy drugs in this neighborhood. Boy, I want to have a holy march against it. My wife keeps telling me, no, don't do it. But I tell you what, I'm fixing to get riled up. I'm, I've had it. That poor woman, she was just trying to take her kids into daycare and a dope head who serves his own lusts. Huh? She works there? Before she could reach in her purse and pull out her gun? Mm, mm, mm. May the God of... And the, anyway, they serve um, their own belly. Verse 18. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. There's your false prophets. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto them unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And I, I just want to encourage people. There are some things I research because I can handle it. I don't recommend it. Because I've read some things, heard some things that shook me a little bit. And I'm going, okay, back in the Bible, Mike. But, verse 20 and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. That's what I'm looking forward to. I want to stomp him bad. For what he's done to me. What he's done to my wife. What he's done to my family. What he's done to my church. I want to get him. I'm, I know vengeance belongs to the Lord. But he said I could get in and on it. And I want to get in on it. Amen. Oh, are we doing this now, God? Okay, let's do it. And I'm sure you have your reasons why you want to do your own stomping. Amen. Amen. Well, he's not somebody to mess with. Let's stand to our feet. I'll talk all night. He's somebody that we will get victory over. And by the way, these things here are devils. Okay? They're not... I was watching a video this, this afternoon when I woke up from my nap about the star people and about how great they are. And they have love in them. Like, I'm going, you are so deceived. These are devils.